Welcome back, Ford family. This is Nathan at Mackay Ford here in Houston, Texas. And what I have on display for you is the all new 2023 Ford Super Duty. The best work truck, best payload, best towing, most capable vehicle on the planet. Now this vehicle has four different engine configurations now available in the 2023 package. The new engines consist of a 6.7 gasoline engine and the Godzilla 7.3. The Godzilla 7.3 does have an increased power output for this year's model. We also offer the diesel 6.7, which everybody knows for its 1,050 foot-pounds of torque at 475 horsepower. We also have a newer variant of that. It's the high output, 500 horsepower at 1,200 feet-pound of torque. Absolutely mind-blowing power coming out of these new workhorse trucks for you folks. So in combination with these new Ford engines, and when I say new, they are new from top down there's a higher output on the 7.3 for 2023 than there was for 22. In the 6.7 diesel platform, we've increased the oiling improvements on that motor, as well as done different heads and intake manifold setup. Now on the 7.3 high output, we have a forged crankshaft, as well as new heads and a new turbo. The new turbo has an oil cooler built into it that you won't find on the 6.7 diesel. So that is awesome technology. They call it a hot middle because the turbo sits right in the middle of the engine. This gives it rapid response when it comes to pushing that gas pedal. So with these four engines that Ford now offers on their 2023 Super Duty, we also got rid of this six-speed transmission, which was previously mated with this 6.2 gas. It's now being upgraded to the G-Force 10-speed transmission on the 6.8. The 7.3 Godzilla, as you all know and love, gets the high output, heavy duty transmission that is also found in the diesel 6.7, as well as that high output 6.7. So that transmission is gonna offer stellar performance for those folks that don't necessarily wanna go to diesel, but they want that high performance, high output gasoline variant. There are some new packages to these 2023 Super Duties. To name a few, you got an XL black appearance and an XLT black appearance, with the XL offering an off-road package, which is really great for you folks who are getting off-road and on-road action. They also offer a tremor package, so if you need more off-road capability other than just pounding the pavement, the Tremor package offers an upgraded shock as well as larger tires to handle those off-road trips. All right, you guys asked for it, so Ford's delivered. Heads-up display available on Lariat and above Ultimate packages. That's King Ranch, Platinum, and Limited. Now, with this new heads-up display, it also comes with trailer navigation system. What does that mean? The trailering navigation system now included on these Super Duties allow you to tailor your navigation system with a large trailer to avoid low bridges and sharp turns to make sure that you make it to your final destination safely. They also offer a overhead view of your trailer. It's a kit that you can add to your Ford truck that enables you to get an overhead view of where your trailer is as you're backing it up maybe in an RV park, or if you're backing it up next to a bunch of 18 wheelers and you just need to get that overview, Ford's now offering a kit where you can install those cameras on your large trailer that'll largely help you move around hard obstacles and sharp turns. Now, one other thing I'd like to add that Ford just released on these new Super Duties is an advanced intelligence pro trailer backup assist. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, as long as you're within 20 feet of your trailer and at 15 degrees of that hitch, you can actually click and hold the Pro Trailer Backup Assist button and it will maneuver your vehicle, including the gas and the brakes, as well as the steering wheel, to maneuver your vehicle under the ball. Now, I do mention the ball for a reason. It does have to be a conventional tow and that computer has to be able to recognize that there's a ball there and it, within that 20 feet, it'll see that you have a trailer back there. It'll maneuver itself 
and connect and drop right underneath of that trailer tongue so you do not need anyone else to assist you in backing up your vehicle to get it to where it's landing right on the hitch uh, or the receiving end of that trailer. All right, so with those trim packages aligned, I know some of you folks out there, you really love your King Ranches and you wanted that integrated steering with the projector headlights. Unfortunately, those are only coming on Platinum and Limited. You will get an LED high intensity light, just like the Lariat on the King Ranch package. Let's come on over to the front and talk about some of the new redesigned front. Up here in the front, of course, you've got your iconic C-channeled headlights, but as you see, the grille is largely bigger and that's to push more air in because I've got this newer, higher output 6.7. I need all the air I can push to the front of this vehicle. As well as along the side, you notice that the badging over here on the side actually allows for air to extract from that engine bay. Now, these new diesels, if you've been driving them or if you're familiar with them, or maybe not at all, they are very, very quiet. Now, with the improved sound deadening that Ford's adding to these vehicles, they wanna offer their customers not only a great riding vehicle that you can use for work and play, but also something you can drive every day that's not blaringly loud and keep you comfortable inside, having a full-on conversation with all the guests that may be inside the vehicle. So in addition to the new trailering and AI technology to connect your trailer, as well as the navigation system that gets you there, uh, Ford also offers two kilowatts of onboard power. This is designed to help the working man build America and utilize power at the job site without a generator. This includes the operation of maybe using jigsaws or air compressors, maybe even chop saws. You utilize that power anywhere on the planet. Also new to Ford Super Duty in 2023 is the integrated side step as well as the bumper step that has integrated handles into the bed edge to ease you into the vehicle, as well as a lengthened tailgate step to enable you to get into these taller and taller Super Duties. Now, you may ask, why are they getting taller and taller? Well, now they're capable of towing up to 40,000 pounds. And with the new onboard scales system, that'll help you read real time how much weight you're loading into the bed by the integrated scale on the tail light. It will tell you exactly when you reach that cap of the towing capacity in terms of its payload ability in the new Ford Super Duty. You guys asked for it. And again, just like the two kilowatt system that Ford added to their new Super Duty, making it the most capable vehicle on the market to date with best in class towing, horsepower and torque, tailgate sensors, as well as tailgate camera. Now, what this enables you to do is to back up to a loading dock without smashing your tailgate into that loading dock because you can actually see at the end of your tailgate. It is a recessed camera that can't be hit or damaged, as well as integrated sensors to show you how close you're becoming to that object. Now, in addition to just backing up to a dock, you may use this technology in order to connect your fifth wheel or gooseneck trailer. This changes the game in the Super Duty space. In addition to all these new upgrades on the Ford's 2023 new Super Duty, we also are now offering 5G Wi-Fi, including telematics. For those companies and fleet companies that run America, you can now monitor and change and schedule oils based on driver habits, as well as make sure the vehicle is non-operational. That's right, you can decommission or shut down that truck before it ever leaves your fleet or commercial lot as well as monitor driving behaviors, acceleration and distance and speed. In addition to all those, Ford has now increased the oil capacity on the new Ford Super Duty diesel. That improves the distance and range to 10,000 miles. With that being said, now the oil change intervals change based on your throttle responsiveness, based on the distance or how hard you're pulling something in the background. This vehicle will now alter the length of that oil change via those telematic systems if you should use them, or if you're just monitoring the vehicle from the oil light that's present on the dash. How is that helpful? It continues to build America in a more efficient way to make sure your vehicles aren't down and they're up and running at a moment's notice. So for you commercial companies out there looking to upgrade your fleet to the new 2023 Super Duty and its new telematic system, I also wanna mention Ford's Pro Upfit, 
which enables you to use buttons such as Rawls lights or enabling uh, hydraulic systems via the screen. No longer installing hard buttons and switches, although there are a few that you can choose from in the Super Duty, now you can integrate those features into the screen. And they also can go to that monitoring system that your fleet manager can now look from on his laptop while he's in the office. So let me take you on inside and show you the all new 2023 Super Duty. Let's go. Welcome back Ford family to Mack Hike Ford here in Houston. This is the 2023 Super Duty's new interior. What we're sitting in right now is a Ford Lariat Ultimate package. And let me tell you, it feels absolutely amazing. The seat backs on this particular trim level have the max recline, which was only available in F-150 for the past few years, is now available in Super Duty for Lariat and above which is a great feature for those of you who travel long distance in your Super Duty, may need to take a break just due to road fatigue. Now also in this new Lariat Ultimate package, I get heads up display as well as a digital instrument cluster. Also get the 12 inch infotainment system, which largely is upgrade due to the 5G Wi-Fi connectivity that this vehicle offers. You can connect up to five different phones, but that makes this infotainment different from the 2022. Many of you may ask that, but what we've added to this is telecommunications as well as with the Ford Upfit program that allows you to actually make buttons operate features on your vehicle that may be in the form of a utility bed or separate lighting. So no longer do I have only the six auxiliary switches. I can now install and operate technologies from the infotainment system itself which is a really great feature. Now going back to that 5G uh, network, you can connect up to 10 different devices while on that 5G network. So it doesn't matter where you go in the US, you will always have connectivity to those that are important to you. There isn't another vehicle in this class that offers 5G Wi-Fi connectivity. So you can have connectivity, whether you're at the campsite or at your workplace, and you also have the ability to have that two kilowatt onboard generator so you can power that workplace or some components of your camper. So these trucks are designed for heavy workloads, heavy payloads, the working man, the working business, the working commercial companies, fleet companies. They're designed to grow America. That's truly what these vehicles are built for. And you can see our statistical data shows that 55% of commercial and privately owned companies that help to build America use the Ford platform because it's best in class for payload, towing, horsepower, torque. And now with the ability to have 10 devices connected on 5G Wi-Fi, the ability for your management team to look at the vehicle and, and determine when it needs to be scheduled for maintenance or decommission it and set it down to where it's not operational for the day and the ability to have that two kilowatts of power so you can go ahead and get the work done. So in addition to these new screens and the heads up display, we also now have a vertical charging pad, which is really, really fantastic. Uh, it allows you to just drop your phone down in a moment's notice and be able to grab it as well. It'll indicate on the screen that there that is charging as you just heard there but there is a small lightning bolt battery that indicates that in case you wanna have this closed. Now what Ford's already pre-thought of was if I'm using this vehicle as a work vehicle as it is, uh, I have three ports down here that allow you to run and fish a cable up to where I can actually use my phone and set it in this spot as well as three other phones right next to it. So if you're that business person that's working out of their vehicle and they've got a work phone uh, two work phones, three work phones, a house phone. You can utilize all those and charge them up at the same time. Make sure that when you get to your final destination, all your phones are charged. You don't have to worry about losing uh, any power on those phone calls, especially the important ones that keep you in business. So while I'm here in the front talking about this area, obviously we've got the four cup holder set up. Now I know largely a lot of folks use this and they may be a little sad that when I remove this piece now, there is not a spot down there that you can hide your money or other, other goods and items. However, there is a key fob slot down there for your dead key fob. And when I say dead key fob, that's exactly what I mean. If your Ford's key should die, the battery itself 
in order for you to start this vehicle, you will have to remove that panel down there, that rubberized panel, set your key fob in the indented slot, and then you can go ahead and fire up the vehicle. Just needs to make sure that it reads the signal coming from the key. So now moving on back to the center console, if you'll notice F-150s, they have an interior work surface that's available for you to utilize here in the cab. Unfortunately, that is not available for the Super Duty with a center console, but it is, however, available for those XLs and XLTs that have a bench row. In fact, you can get a bench and a Lariat if you'd like to have that. So for that bench front row, the surface will actually rotate, allowing you to use a laptop from this angle, or if you had to eat or something of that nature, you could certainly use that surface for that. You'll close it back up and you'll flip that seat back up. It's really good if you have a really large crew that are going out to work on a, on a, on a job that'll allow you to sit all those folks, but when they're not in the vehicle, you can go ahead and start writing up those invoices to send to your customers and make sure they pay you on time. So moving on from this center console, you'll notice that Ford Super Duty specifically never changes this feature. And some people are upset about it. Some people like it. And that is the shifter. Ford has always had a shifter up here. They still do not option a center console shifter, largely because folks who have vehicles of this size are packing a lot of drinks or a lot of different items in this center console. So if you're an individual who loves Super Duty but likes a center console shifter, unfortunately, as of right now, we won't be putting those in our Super Duties. For those of you who have owned the Super Duty for a long time, you know and love that Ford has a shifter on the column versus in the center. Moving on up towards the climate control settings, I love these because they're tactile. At a moment's notice, I can tap and move the fan speed up or down without really ever looking. And I know in the previous models, before we got to the 2020 and above model, we didn't have that. And folks absolutely love that it steps out, makes it easy without them ever having to take their eyes off the road. They just reach over, tap, 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 and you're controlling that fan speed. I know a lot of companies are going to a digital full screen, but there's just something about having tactile buttons for your climate control that just makes it so much easier. You can see them, you can just push it. I can do ventilated seats at a moment's notice, heated seats at a moment's notice, the uh, heated steering wheel, my fan speed, of course, whether it's dual climate control or his, hers separate, I can do that. And then in addition to that, you still have tactile radio buttons. So if I wanna control the sound, I can click the sound button and, and, and change the way the tone is coming out of the speakers. I can change it from stereo mode to surround sound mode. And yes, that's right. The Lariat Ultimate Package does come with the 1020 watt 18 speaker B&O stereo system that we've seen in the F-150. So this one will get a surround sound like you've never heard before. Uh, I can change the balance and fade for this. I can also change the compensation. So the speed compensation is as I'm increasing in speed, the volume is increasing. If you've never noticed that, that's what it's there for. In the sound mode, we already went over that. Uh, this button in the middle is quick to sources. So if I wanna quickly go to the source uh, and change what type of sources I'm listening to. I just tap that button, I go to Sirius XM, I'll go to AM, and I'll go to FM. Uh, this button over here to the right is actually a calm screen. So you'll get a calm screen if you don't want all this craziness going on over there on the side. You can click calm screen, just focus your attention to the road. You can click it again and it'll go to full blacked out mode. So there's absolutely no, uh, no screen on whatsoever tap it again it'll come back now in this visual that you guys are currently experiencing i've changed this display from the daylight or automatic to night and that's just to help the video content of course you've got your back and your forward as well as your pause and play the tuner over here will operate uh, your sirius xm channels through your am fm and then of course you got the power off button if you want to turn your radio off now this screen does enable wireless CarPlay in Android Auto. And you can simply do that by clicking the phone button and, and adding a phone to the device. For you Apple customers out there that don't have Siri enabled, you will have to enable it. 
in order to get the CarPlay to function. Otherwise it will not come on. So if you're experiencing that currently in any of your SYNC 4 F uh, series vehicles or Expedition, that is probably the problem there. You definitely need to turn on the Siri. It doesn't need to be fully turned on. You just need to partially turn her on and your CarPlay will show up, which now is updated to where it'll expand across the entire screen. In our previous videos, you noted, we noted that it doesn't cover the entire screen. It's just a small portion. It is now updated. So that brings me to my next point. All these vehicles have software over the air updates. So they will get better and better over time based on usage and feedback from Ford customers. All right, so moving along from the screen and some of the operations with CarPlay and some of the other things that we'll get into a little bit further detail, the Pro Trailer Backup Assist is now in a much better spot than it was before. It's up here, more ergonomical to the steering wheel, which allows you to make those very small incremental changes while backing up your trailer, as well as the AI enhanced drive it to my trailer feature, which is clicking and holding that Pro Trailer Backup Assist. Now, as I mentioned outside, you will have to have a ball if you're conventionally towing this, just so it can see where it needs to go within 15 degrees and within 20 feet of distance. Uh, down below, we have the integrated trailer brake. Now, a lot of you folks uh, may have seen that and have no idea how it works. I'll quickly explain it. When your trailer is connected, conventional or fifth wheel towed, when your trailer is connected, applying this action is to apply the brakes on that trailer, okay? So why is that important? As I'm driving down the road, I want the vehicle to break with the trailer. I don't want the trailer to break before. When I put pressure on the brake, it's gonna send a signal to the tail lights, which turn the lights on. In this case, imagine that being a 100% braking effectiveness to my trailer. So you have a plus and minus, which is a gain or a loss. And that will help you to slow the trailer or get the trailer to break exactly where you want it. What you'll do is you'll take a road where not a lot of folks are at as you have it connected and you're going to apply this as if you were stepping on the brake slowly at first and you'll feel your trailer's brakes and then eventually lock up. You don't want the trailer to fully lock up when you fully depress this because that action is the same as if you fully depressed your brake pedal with 100% force. So you want them to work together and that's how you do that. Moving on down, we have drive modes. Now these drive modes, Ford is largely engineering the way the vehicle interacts with the drive modes. So if this is your first Super Duty or full-size truck that you've ever had, and you've never really taken any vehicle of this nature off-road or, or literally just driving in any crazy conditions such as snow and ice possibly, Ford's done all the thinking for you. Ford's pre-engineered these drive modes per the condition you're experiencing, so you don't need to be a professional truck driver in order to look like a professional truck driver, if that makes sense. If I grab this dial and I rotate it to open the menu, I can rotate it then again, and we come to slippery roads. What's just taken place is the vehicle went into four-wheel drive high, as well as showing a slippery indication, which means my transmission's shifting points are gonna take place much sooner rather than putting down tremendous amounts of torque, as well as my, my engine throttle responsiveness is gonna be slightly skewed. And that's to ensure that we're helping to avoid a sliding in those conditions. So it's really great that Ford's able to do these drive modes, which are tailor fitting the vehicle per the experience and condition you're in. And that will go for all of the Ford lineups, but more exclusively, I love what they've done on the larger vehicles. And just so you guys know, updates will come eventually with different drive modes that are gonna offer new experiences to the driver. So as of right now, we have slippery, normal, wet. We do have a trail off road mode, which in this case is gonna lock the rear differential and it's gonna turn on our traction control. Now, moving over to the screen, something just happened. Our front, our front camera just turned on. So what has taken place there is I'm going off road. It's gonna show me where I'm gonna go if I turn my steering wheel. But not only that, I can now look and wheel spot for the front tires. I don't know if you can see that visual there, but 
I do have one door open, so excuse that camera view, but if you're looking on this one here, that's, that's largely what our view is gonna be. And you can see that the wheel is changing. This allows me to go off-roading while wheel spotting. So if there's a sharp edged rock or maybe a large stump or tree that I need to get around and it's a tight area, I can use this mode to look at my front uh, tires to see exactly where they are. But that's not the only new mode we have on the 2023. We also have the rear tire mode where if we're taking a, ch uh, where if we're taking an angle or backing up, we can now look at those rear tires to see how they're operating in conjunction with the obstacles around the vehicle. Now, there is another mode you guys are most likely familiar with here, which is the trailer reverse guidance mode. In this image, we're looking down the left and right body of the vehicle, ensuring our trailer is aligned up with our vehicle, or if we need to see if it's going left or if it's going right from where we truly want it to go. Now, Pro Trailer Backup Assist is gonna make moving that trailer very, very easy. Instead of doing the reverse motion to get my trailer to go where I want it to go, I simply just drive the trailer with Pro Trailer Backup Assist. If I want my trailer to go left, I turn this dial left, my steering wheel will then go right. It allows very incremental changes at a moment's notice, and quickly when I release it, it auto centers the wheels, which is a really nice feature as well. Now, a quick way to get to this, uh, to this menu here where you're looking at these cameras is you can just tap the camera button. Now, the views that we're able to see here are largely due to trail mode. So there is no other way to access those menus other than being in trail mode, but largely the other modes or the other views will be there. So another camera view that I absolutely love that's available on Super Duty and F-150 is the bed camera. Absolutely love that, but what's new to 22 and 23 is the ability to access this bed camera, not only right there, but also right here. I can visibly take a look shortly at the bed camera as I'm driving down the road. Now, there is a new feature on this as well, and that is this striped line that helps me line up that fifth wheel. So I love this camera view. It enables me to look and see what's going on in the bed if I don't have a fifth wheel, or even if I do, it helps me enable and line up the trailer for fifth wheel or gooseneck. Now, there's probably a software update due to this one, but what'll happen in the future is when I turn this wheel, it'll actually turn the curvature of this striped line, allowing me to line up that trailer. So moving away from the bed cam, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the backup cam. There's a reason for me doing this. I've got a stripe line right here that helps me line up my trailer's tongue to the ball. Now I can also go over here once I get incrementally close, I can look directly down at the ball to make that connection perfect so that I don't need any spotters. I can get out and connect it by myself. That's if you don't want to use Pro Trailer's AI technology to back you up in underneath of the tongue by itself. So now moving away from this ball camera, I'm gonna quickly just go back to this backup camera. As I mentioned previously, the Lariat doesn't have a power tailgate even on the Ultimate package, nor does it have the tailgate sensors integrated into the top of the tailgate or a flush mounted rear camera like King Ranch Platinum and Limited do, but it does have a tailgate drop button and I can drop the tailgate from inside the vehicle. Now I will have to manual lift that, but with this same button on King Ranch Platinum and Limited, I could tap that button again and it would come up. In conjunction with that, as I tap that button and it's dropping, it would automatically flip to that tailgate backup camera, allowing me to look straight back as I'm backing up and including those sensors to make sure I don't back up into anything. So moving along from the camera systems and how they've largely changed from the previous year models to today's, I'm gonna step over to this button over here, which is engine braking. Now engine brake is on just by tapping that button or I can have it automatically on. And when would I like to use those? Well, while I'm traveling with that big giant trailer or a large payload, I'd like to use the engine braking to help slow the vehicle down rather than use my brakes and burn my brakes up. So that is a large benefit for those customers who will be using this vehicle with towing heavy boats or RVs, or maybe even carrying concrete or 
stack of bricks. Moving along, I have this button over here. Now this one's gonna be your park alarm button. So some people, they do not like to uh, listen to the beeping that happens as you approach an object. That button will turn that off. And it's a quick reference because we found that a lot of folks don't wanna dig through the screens or the menus to try to find that button. So we've added it right up here on top for you. Hazard button is right next to that as well as traction control. And this is hill descent assist, largely similar to what the engine braking is doing. It's gonna hold speed and it's also gonna mate that with the transmission. So not only are you using the engine now, you're also using the engine transmission to slow down the load. I would say maybe going through the Cascades over in Washington is a really good example, or maybe Smoky Mountain in the Tennessees where you've got really steep grades and they're very, very long and deep. I'm sure there are other parts of the country that also have those steep grades where this technology could be very useful for those individuals. Instead of burning up the brake pads on their car, they're utilizing the vehicle to do it for them. So moving from the hill descent assist, we also have a secret compartment button, which is gonna be an upper storage box. I largely use that for napkins because as a driver, I can reach over while still maintaining eye contact with the road. Maybe I've spilled my Starbucks coffee and I can go ahead and clean that up and then go ahead and close it without even ever having to look. It's got a very long edge to where you can grab it from just about anywhere. Now, I can't say I would be willing to do that way down here because I would literally be directing my eyes off the road. So great job on Ford to add that upper glove box for, for napkins because that's what I love to use it for. So aside from the upper and lower storage box over there, I did mention these ones have max reclined seats. I can show you that a little bit later, but for right now, I would like to get into more of the safety features that the vehicle has to offer. So let's dive into this screen. I'm gonna click on features and I've got driver's assistance pulled up. Now, something I didn't expect Ford to do, I largely wanted them to do, and they went ahead and did it. Lane centering technology. We're not talking about lane keeping for those folks who still have Fords that are pre-2020. Lane centering is very different from lane keeping. Now, they largely do the same thing because this button does both. But lane centering takes place while you're in a cruise control. Largely, you're gonna do that while you're on the highway. In fact, that's probably one of the safest places you can do it. Wouldn't necessarily do that on a side road or a feeder. However, lane centering, what its technology brings to the table is it's assisted driving. So as I'm driving down the highway, as it takes a turn, I'm using a radar LIDAR system up here above your rear view mirror. You can see it when you're outside of the vehicle looking in but that radar LIDAR is reading the painted stripes on the road. So as the highway takes a turn, you'll feel the steering wheel assist you in making that turn. Now it's not driving for you, but pretty close. Now, what does that help you do? Well, if I'm running a 40 foot trailer on this, I can now keep an eye on my mirrors and I'm still focusing on the road, but the vehicle has a lot of control to give me comfort that it's also watching what's going on in front of me and around me. And that's what adaptive cruise control helps out with. It maintains that distance between you and the person in front of you. Many of you folks already probably well know about that, but lane centering, I wanna go back to that, is different from lane keeping. And a lot of the Ford customers get that confused. Uh, that same button that does your lane centering, by the way, it is lane keeping. So if you find that you're not a blinker user and you're not in a cruise control, while you're on a feeder road or a side road. If you tap that button, it'll turn that feature off so it's not trying to assist you back in the lane or vibrating your steering wheel. Coming on down, we have the speed limit warning assist. That's available on your adaptive cruise control. You also got your lane keeping system. So this mode is currently set up to alert and aid. And as this video suggests, it's gonna pull me back into my lane while also vibrating the steering wheel. Most of the time, I find that this is probably a little bit more uh, frustrating towards customers than not. Most of the time, and this is just my personal opinion, I'd rather have it on aid. Because if I have it on alert and it vibrates the steering wheel, I might think I just flattened a tire. And it vibrates and, oh, maybe I popped a tire. 
Maybe I didn't. But if I have it on aid, I know that I don't have an imbalanced tire or that I popped one because the vehicle is going to try to assist me back into my lane versus assist me and vibrate. So this is the mode that I choose for most customers and it seems to be working really well. Moving on down, we got pre-collision assist. So this is with automatic braking and evasive steering now on the Super Duty. So evasive steering means if I'm traveling and, and traveling too fast with someone in front of me and we are, let's say, within a car's distance and that person slams on the brakes, the vehicle detects that it's its distance to speed is too close, it will option for evasive steering around that if a lane to the left or right is available. I love that Ford actually leaves a shoulder in this depiction because it, if you notice, it will never take the shoulder. It doesn't know how wide the shoulder is. It doesn't know if you're gonna fall off a cliff or run into a guardrail. So it'll only take a left or right striped lane. Say if you're in the middle of the highway and there's a high speed lane and a slower speed lane and you're right in the middle, it'll take left or right if there's an available lane. Now, you also have emergency braking, active emergency braking with that. Distance indicator will show up on here. It'll basically always continuously adjust and show you where you are in correlation to a safe spot of following versus a non-safe spot. And then your pre-collision assist, well, as we all know, it'll automatically slam on the brakes as it detects an imminent collision. Now, this is if I'm traveling and someone's already come to a stop and I'm still traveling towards them, it'll alert me on my main instrument cluster here. If I do nothing, it will apply the brakes. Uh, keep in mind that the Ford vehicles, when they do that, they do measure off of max payload. So if you are running max payload, it's gonna go ahead and apply those brakes early. Now with onboard scales, we can increase that ability to have further knowledge of how much weight is in the vehicle. So that's really great that Ford's able to do all of that in their pre-collision system to help protect you and everyone around you. So moving on out of here, uh, largely these options are the same and have been for a number of years, but there is a new feature, which is trailer side view. And if you'll notice when I tap this, it gives us an indication that we currently don't have a trailer connected and what its job is to do is to look down the right or left side, depending on which way you turn your blinker while a trailer is connected. Again, I don't have a trailer connected, so I couldn't show you this view, but largely like you've seen where it shows to the back left tire or the back right tire, that view will display when you turn your blinker on while you have a trailer connected. So moving on from driver's assistance, I next have power boards, and I'm gonna go through these quite quickly, folks, so stay with me here. Power board mode is currently on auto. That means when I lock the car and when I open the doors, the boards will deploy or close when the door is closed. Out means out, so it's gonna have the boards deployed all the time. And then off means up, and they're not deploying. Uh, you can extend that timer by putting an extended timer on it, and I've actually had a customer do that because he has a dog and the dog rides with him. So he'll open the door and the dog will climb up the power boards. And then by the time he closes that door and walks around to the other side, the boards already come up. He'd like it to stay out longer. So we select extended timer for him. That works out for some folks. It may work out for you. And that's how you'd use that and change it. I'm gonna back up out of there. We have pro power on board. Now, if you'll notice, I do have an AC120 at 20 amp here on the dash. I also have one on the back of the center console as well as two in the bed. And it indicates here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that feature on. It says the vehicle must be started, so I apologize. I'm gonna go ahead and start it. So now that I've turned the vehicle on, let's go ahead and click generator button mode on. All the outlets throughout the cab and in the bed are now functional up to 2000 watts of power. So if you want to run a Keurig or something of that nature and have your nice breakfast coffee while you're driving into work, you certainly can do that. And anytime you're done with it, you just click the generator button, button off and you're good to go. Moving away from that, I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off. We have zone lighting in this one, which enables me to turn on any white light at any time via my cell phone through the Ford Pass app, or also from in here, I can simply click this button and turn on all zones 
if I choose to have a working area of just the rear, I can turn on all the rear lights. If I'm working from the right, I can turn on the rear and the right. I can turn on the front or I can turn on the left. I can turn on any one that I may need to flood a zone or an area full of light. Possibly you're working late night in construction and you need that extra light. You can power some, uh, some extra lights through the bed if you absolutely needed to. You just turn that generator on and hook up a set of work lights. So zone lighting is an option that's available to you via the phone or right here in the cab. It allows you to just flood an area full of light, maybe if you're setting up a campsite or if you're closing out a job at work and have to pack all your materials and didn't want to leave your drill bit behind in the grass. Zone lighting is very helpful for that. All right, so trailering is the next button down below. Now, this is where your pro trailer system comes in correspondence with the vehicle understanding the length and width dimensions. So this way it can push a blind spot to nine feet wide by 33 feet in length, helping assist you in understanding who may be in the blind spot of your vehicle. Now, unfortunately, this vehicle is not equipped with onboard scales, and I'd love to show you folks that, but in essence, it's gonna be another button down here that says onboard scales. Now, when you pull up that menu, it'll show you how much weight is currently in the vehicle. Let's say you had a whole crew load and you can zero that out and add weight to the bed and it'll show you that difference in weight. This way, if you have a specific set load amount for mulch or let's say concrete, for example, and you're gonna be having the customer view that by weight, you can utilize your truck to weigh that and then how much material it took to do that job It'll indicate that here on the scales. Now, what you're trying to do, and I'll try to go ahead and post a visual representation since it's not on this vehicle, is you're trying to balance it and it will show you that it's in the middle. Uh, the scales will show also in the tail light should you elect them to. And largely that's where folks are gonna be looking at this technology. They're gonna want it instantaneously utilizing the tail lights to show how much weight is in the bed for max payload capacity. So lastly, moving from the uh, onboard scales menu that I unfortunately don't have equipped in this vehicle is the Pro Upfit, which is another feature that would show up next to that, that enables a company to program lights and switches and buttons, maybe to operate a mechanical crane or bucket if you have the PTO installed on this vehicle. But we also have tactile switches up above. So these are auxiliary switches and the first four on the auxiliary switch are with the ignition keyed on, which we're currently set in. The engine is not running, but the ignition keyed is on. These will be operational via the ignition keyed on. And the last two, they can be operational with the key off and it's just utilizing battery power. A lot of folks will use those for strobe lights or other work oriented uh, lights that just indicate to folks that there's construction or something happening ahead while the vehicle is physically turned off. In front of that, of course, we have our glasses case. And one thing I do like to add that I love about what Ford's done is they've made the sunroof operation on the left side. So to open and close, and of course it's one touch. And then the shade on the other rather than before it was a button next to each other, which was semi hard to see which one was the shade and which one wasn't. But over time, of course, you got used to it. Now there's no guess in it. Uh, the shade back is the one that's facing towards the back and the shade forward to close is the forward one. Now I should note while using that sunroof uh, that if you tap the shade forward and let's say your sunroof is not open, you tap the shade forward, it will always come to the 50% margin you will then have to tap it again for it to come fully closed. Now, if your sunroof is open, it'll automatically open the shade 50%, drop the sunroof and bring it back. And then if you wanted to open the shade one more, you'd tap it so that your rear passengers could then look out through your panoramic Vista roof. So now that you've seen the all new 2023 and it's totally revamped design with its four new upgraded engines and transmission combinations, as well as its best in class, towing, horsepower, torque, as well as trailering options in its AI technology with our new heads-up display system. 
There's no reason you should look at any other productivity truck in the market other than Ford Super Duty. I'm Nathan Wood with Mackay Ford. Thank you for enjoying this presentation and I hope to see you on the next one.